Hi guys, this is Pradeep. Welcome to another blog. Someone asked me to prepare one video related to asset accounting. The question is, what is the accounting entries are there or what are the accounting entries are there in asset account? This question may be important for from uh, analyst point of view, business analyst point of view in S4 ANA or uh, SAP ECC you can take. And total, uh, uh, not only in SAP, even normal ERPs also might be, they are following the same process, but I will take the example of uh, SAP here. Now, there is no standard answer that I can't say that, what is the accounting entries related to asset accounting. Rather, we will segregate this one into multiple business process and each business process wise, we will see what are the accounting entries are available. Right, so first accounting, uh, first one I will take here, asset purchase. So you can say asset purchase, asset acquisition, anything you can say. In SAP, we are saying that it is asset acquisition. We know that accounting point of view, the accounting entry related to asset, if you are going to purchase the asset from any vendor, then it will be asset accounting is uh, asset account is going to debit and vendor is going to credit. This is the normal accounting. But when we are going to work in any SAP, uh, I mean any ERP environment and uh, particularly let's say SAP, then we have to understand here the concept of subledger and ledger. So we know that like your customer vendor, asset is also one of your subledger. For example, we are going to purchase one particular, uh, let's say we are going to purchase one laptop. Now laptop is your asset, but it is also in technical language, we are saying that it is our subledger because you have one group is there, which is your computer and computer equipments. So when you are going to prepare balance sheet, you are not going to say we have uh, 100 laptops are there and this is the total value depreciation. Individual asset wise, you are not going to show in the balance sheet. Maybe you are going to show one asset register internally, but in balance sheet, you are showing that this is all our assets, right? So all our computers, printers, everything you are going to show that this is our computer and equipment. So that is why we have one reconciliation account is there that is related to computer. Similarly for machine, one reconciliation account for building, one reconciliation account. So this entry which is right now it is there, that is asset account is going to debit and vendor. This accounting entry which user is going to enter, but in backend, system is going to segregate this entry, but, but because ultimately we have to do the reconciliation. So anyone from the R to R team, you can connect with my example. So in month end, you are going to do the reconciliation. So in any manual activities or in a manual process, we are doing the reconciliation manually, whereas in ERP or in SAP, the reconciliation will be automated. So when we are going to purchase the asset, so that time the procurement team, they are going to post the purchase entry. Then that information they will share to the R2R team and they will do the manual reconciliation. But in SAP, no reconciliation is required, particularly in S4 HANA, although in ECC we used to do earlier, but in S4 HANA, reconciliation is not required. So I will show you that how it will be automated or reconciliation process is automated. So that means the month end process will be uh, simplified here. So accounting entry, of course, this will be the accounting entry. So accounting entry is asset account going to debit and vendor, but in back end, this only will not get this accounting entry. Rather, you will get here some more entries will be there. So here we have a concept of uh, technical clearing account. If you are doing the configuration consultant, then it is important for you. But business analyst point of view, it is not important for you because anyway, you are not going to do the configuration. But configuration point of view, that configuration of technical clearing account, it's mapping, all this rule, everything is important. Okay, so back to our point. So asset accounting is going to debit and vendor is going to credit. That will be entered by the user, but in backend, you will see something different. So this one, instead of showing in this PPT, let's go to the SAP system and there I can show you the accounting entries, what user is going to enter and how backend it is uh, different or it will be automated. Now here a couple of uh, asset related entries are there. So I'm going to take the first two documents. So this document and this document. So both the documents are related to asset purchase. So we will understand here how the user is going to enter the document and how system is going to add some additional information. So the concept is same way that we are going to purchase the asset through finance team or we are going to purchase the asset through the logistic team. Right, so let me take the first document. Now, uh, I said that accounting entry will be asset is going to debit and vendor is going to credit if you are going to purchase the asset. But actually you can see here, the it's a different entry. So here vendor is not involved. Actually vendor is there, but right now if you'll check the screen, so here no vendor is there, right? So here the 2000 account, that is a different account, something is uh, credited here. And uh, this 3015, that is also something different one, right? So to understand this one, first we have to go to the actual entry which was posted by user. 
right so this is the reconciliation entry or this is the system generated entry so we will see the original entry which is entered by the user so if you check the original document this is your actual entry so here you can see the vendor is credited the line item 1 which is posting key 31 I, I guess you have the knowledge of posting key so if you don't have this is the credit entry so we are posting or we are using the 31 posting key here so um, vendor credited so 22,000 INR credit and the debit asset in, in fact, it is not asset. It is the reconciliation account what we are, I said that we, system is going to enter. Now, if I am the user, I will enter this one is going to my credit and this entry system is going to enter in the back end to process, to reconcile the process automatically or to reconciliation so that we will have the reconciliation, right? So this is my operation document and you can verify this is, if we we'll go to the document type, you can see document KR. So KR, we know that it is vendor invoice, right? So with reference to this entry, entry system posted the asset entry or this this entry there so in balance it we are going to show that we are having this 2000 is my ledger information right so 2000 is a ledger and it is uh, going to debit so that means related to this particular transaction my reconciliation account updated but in total if I want to see everything I want to see here the both operation entry plus the reconciliation entry then we can go to the asset accounting view here you can see together it is available. The document type KR and document number 19001. So this is the entry entered by the user. So vendor here credited and asset debited. In fact, in S4 directly we are not going to debit the asset. So the technical clearing account debited here. So of course it is part of configuration. So uh, that one account is debited. So that account you can see this 3015 account debited and 3015 account credited. So automatically it's credited with your operation document. So, uh, the, uh, with your ledger document. So with reference to this is my ledger which I have linked. This is my accounting principle IFRS and you can see here the technical clearing account initially debited and credited. So technical clearing account balance zero and reporting point of view it is no use. So finally you can say my vendor account is credited and asset is debited. Now if I will check my asset report and I will check my ledger report, I'm going to have the same information without doing anything. Vendor just entered the operation entry and we have the reconciliation entry as well as the asset report, asset information as well as uh, my reconciliation information. So accounting entry is asset to vendor, but it is automated reconciled with the ledger. So now if we will to prepare the balance sheet, simply we are going to take this balance, right? So if we are going to explain in this way, so it is going to help you in your interview. Now related to same purchase, let me take another example, another entry. So this is also same concept. Only thing is in this case, the original entry is the logistic. Last time the original entry was finance, but in this case, original entry was logistic. So let's check it. Now here multiple things are there. It's not directly we purchased. So you can see the purchase order created. Then after that we have the GR. Then after that we have invoice. And finally the accounting entry is there. Let's not go into that. So what is my operation document? If you'll see the original document. So original document should be the vendor invoice from logistic, from MM. So here asset and MM integration is also there. So this is my vendor invoice. And with reference to this vendor invoice, we got the asset entries. Again, here also you will find that asset entry information is not there or vendor information is not there because it is your uh, reconciliation is done. If I will go to the asset accounting view, here you will find. Now this one is my operation document. So 51002 is my integrated document. So again, vendor credited, accounts payable credit, then some tax information is there. Then this is my technical clearing account. So technical clearing account debit, technical clearing account credit, again, same concept, entry nullified. Then we have the asset balance 2100. So accounting entry, whatever application you are going to use, it will be same whether it is SAP, Oracle, any other ERP you are using. But in S4, it is fully automated. The reconciliation process is automated. Now this one is going to help both the team. It is going to help uh, mainly the R2R team because they are man working on the asset part and also it is going to help the procurement. So uh, maximum relief is uh, you are going to get related to R2R. So this question will be part of your R2R that how the reconciliation process is automated with reference to asset procurement and may be related to that. They, uh, they may ask the questions related to this asset entry. Okay, now coming to next example. So what is the next accounting entry with reference to asset sale? If you are going to sell the asset, then what will be the accounting entry? 
Sell of normally we know that if you are going to sell the asset through customer, then in that case, customer is going to debit and revenue will be credited. That is a normal sales process. But if we are going to sell the asset, so customer is going to debit and asset is going to credit. But when you are going to enter like this or when we are going to, so revenue recognition part we are ignoring. And most of the time you will find that small companies when they, uh, they don't have a proper books of accounts, they will only record here that asset initially when purchased the asset, asset was debited, when they sold the asset, asset credited. But other part they used to skip it. But when uh, SAP companies or they are going to record their books of account, they are going to touch everything. So it's not like a very straightforward accounting entry that as customer is going to debit and uh, asset is going to credit. Now here you can see customer account is debit. So 01 is nothing but posting key for your reference I have added. It's not amount, it's posting key. So customer account is going to debit. So we know that customer is going to debit when there will be any uh, sales process will be there. Then are we going to credit the asset or not? Yes asset account is going to credit 75 asset credit plus here you can see some more entries are there that is your asset sales account credit assume that it is a normal sales so customer is going to debit and revenue is going to credit so so a customer account debited and revenue account credit but ultimately here we have to credit the asset because when we purchase the asset that time we increase the asset value or we debited the asset so here we are going to credit the asset so asset uh, asset sales account you can say asset sales account which was credited now immediately system is going to debit who is going to post this entry one by one no one user is just going to post a customer invoice entry automatically system is going to post this entry in back end so i will show you that too so asset sales account credited asset sales account debited so if let's say we sold the asset with some amount so this amount is going to debit this amount is going to credit it's 50 is posting key related to gl so immediately that amount will be nullified with a debit entry then depreciation also need to be adjusted accumulated depreciation because initially you have credited the depreciation maybe so that need to be adjusted and asset account is going to credit in sale purchase maybe loss will be there or profit will be there if it will be profit then it will be credit or it will be loss and then loss is going to debit so the accounting entry is not straight customer account is going to asset is going to credit customer debit and asset credit rather these multiple entries will be there so that's why initially i said that i can't answer like one entry because when we'll go for Asset purchase, reconciliation will be there. When you are going to sell the asset, that time reconciliation will be there because we are working on ledger and sub-ledger, both the concepts simultaneously. So it is again part of your AR and R2R activities. Okay, now let's take this particular document. Now we will take this document. Now this document is not related to asset. This is a normal customer invoice. So document type you can see DR, it's customer invoice. And from this, we will see the asset entry. So uh, what is your credit entry here? So asset sale, that time it was their uh, asset sales, it is revenue clearing I have named, but it is same account. So revenue clearing account credit 50 and debit is what? Customer. So in S4 we are using business partner, so that's why this account is debited. So this is your operation document. So customer debited and revenue clearing account credited, nothing but customer is going to debit, this entry customer is going to debit, asset sales account is going to credit. Okay, now if we go to the asset accounting view, there you will get multiple entries. So this one is your operation document and this one is your asset document or you, uh, you can say ledger document. So simultaneously my ledgers are updated and uh, if you are using multiple ledgers like in this case I am using multiple ledgers so you can see other accounting principles are also there. You are going to have the non-leading ledger entries or other ledger entries. So you can see n one is my non-leading ledger so there are entries there. It depends whether you are working on parallel accounting or not so the entry will be accordingly you are going to have the informations now this one is my operation document and this is my asset document so what is the asset doc uh, entry here customer account is going to debit this one is debited revenue clearing or asset sales is going to credit so it's credited revenue clearing account 5504 this one is again clearing account so it is initially it is credited then debited then it is nullified zero then after that initially we purchased the asset now we are going uh, that time we debited now we need to credit the asset so if you recall in my last document 2000 account was debited the reconciliation account so here 2000 account is going to credit 75 posting key so 22000 that time it was debited as we purchased the asset and now we are selling the asset so that's why it is credited then some adjustments related to accumulated depreciation so this is your accumulated depreciation and that is your uh, loss on sale loss or profit depends on the scenarios. 
So this is how this uh, system is going to bifurcate the accounting entry. Check the entry once again and compare one by one. So this is your entry, customer debit, asset sales, I'm using revenue clearing. That one is going to credit. So this is our entry related to this document, document number 18002, accounts receivable, customer debit, revenue clearing credit. Then adjustment entries will be there, revenue clearing which was debited, now it is credit, nullified, sorry, revenue clearing was credited, now it is debited, it's nullified, then asset we are selling, so that account is credited here, then some adjustments related to depreciation and loss on, in this transaction, loss, loss is there, so that's why loss account is debited. So this is our second business process. Now coming to next business process, that is depreciation. If depreciation will be there, what would be the accounting entry? Maybe in accounting, we are uh, recording or maybe you have the knowledge that depreciation is going to debit and asset is going to credit but that is the old mechanism now we are going to of course depreciation we are going to debit as we are going to show the full value the purchase value in the balance sheet so that's why we are going to show the accumulated depreciation right so depreciation account is going to debit and instead of directly crediting the asset you can show that accumulated depreciation is going to credit so depreciation account is going to debit and your accumulated depreciation account is going to credit so this will be your credit entry then this one is going to adjust against your asset while posting the depreciation so uh, why, sorry while um, um, when we will prepare the balance sheet so accounting entry will be depreciation account debit which is going to transfer to your PL account and accumulated depreciation which will be adjusted from your asset so if your purchase value of asset is let's say 100k one lakh till now we have already calculated accumulated depreciation since last three four years 30,000 so we are going to show 100k one lakh total asset value purchase value of the asset and so far accumulated depreciation 30,000. So your net book value this year, it is 70,000. So this is how we are going to report your depreciation. So if you'll check one document related depreciation so that you will get more clarity. This is the entry. So uh, here multiple line entries are there because of multiple assets, but if you'll check the entry, it is same. So depreciation account debit, which is GL debit and uh, credit is your accumulated depreciation, which we will adjust against your balance sheet. Again, P&L items as it is P&L items. So it is cost. So that's why respective cost centers are there. And uh, I'm using profit center. So profit center is also there. So that means this is your current operational expenditure, which maybe you will to transfer to your cost of production calculation but again automatically it will be transferred to your respective cost center and costing team is going to work on that part and uh, depreciation point of view this is your depreciation accounting entry for depreciation and accumulated depreciation and uh, here being user we are not doing anything user is just going to run a program as per the configuration the entire things will be fully automated so that's why you will find that 2% activity will be handled by user, 98% activities will be handled by the consultant because consultant or developers, they are going to do all the configuration so that user's job will be easy. So that's why if you are preparing for business analyst role, give focus more on the business process, this accounting and what are the activities that are involved. If you are preparing for consulting job, then in backend, same business process you need to configure until unless you will not configure it or you will test it you will not get the clarity right so this is an accounting entry related to depreciation or depreciation postings coming to next business process that is scrapping of assets sometimes maybe due to some fire incidents or due to some accident we need to completely scrap our asset so what will be the accounting entry it is a very straightforward entry so your asset is going to credit this time we are not selling the asset it is scrapped so Asset account is going to credit, of course, and uh, debit will be your accumulated depreciation because we need to adjust that too. When we are transferring the depreciation, so we are crediting the accumulated depreciation, and when we are adjusting the depreciation, so that time accumulated depreciation is debited. So that's why you must have seen this one. Accumulated depreciation was debited with reference to asset sale also. You can see the fourth entry, accumulated depreciation on asset 70 entry. Same, it is also available here. Accumulated depreciation account is going to uh, adjusted here accumulated depreciation account is going to uh, no it is going to uh, debit so it is not credit it is it will be debited it is my mistake debit okay so here it is also debit accumulated depreciation is going to debit 70 and here also it is going to debit and uh, loss if here 100% capital loss is there. So loss due to scrapping, loss due to fire incidents, loss due to accident, anything that will be debit. So asset credit, 
then adjusted depreciation is going to debit and loss due to scrapping account is going to debit. So let's check one document related to this one so that it will be easy for us to understand. Now check this document. So this is exactly the same. So asset account is going to 2000 when we purchase that time it was adjusted. Now this is your asset operation, uh, sorry asset document. So 2000 initially it was debited when we sold that asset that time it is credited and now as we scrapped the asset that is also credited, right? And uh, here also it is the same scrapping account is going to debit 40 is debit. So this amount is capital loss and uh, this one is your adjusted depreciation 70 accumulated depreciation adjusted here. Same information if you will check in asset report also you are going to get every transaction every transaction you will get the same information. For example, this is one. Okay, so from different sources we procured the asset and finally we sold uh, it's not sold it's scrapped actually so this is your retirement retirement current year without revenue means it is scrapped right so this is our entry and if i will double click you will get the same accounting entry which i was showing similarly if it related to this now i mean asset explorer or asset register maybe you can say if we'll check this asset now this one also sold but difference is with revenue so here we have some losses there but we have generated the revenue but in other case it was scrapped now this one with revenue if we'll check this entry already i have shown these entries to you so here you can see this is our operation document invoice and this is our asset adjustment so try to get the difference between scrapping process and in normal process right so this is how the accounting entries will be there process wise so there is no standard answer what will be the accounting entry this will be the accounting entry so first you have to understand what is the process then accordingly you can uh, figure out what the accounting entries is there and consulting point of view again your base will be uh, business process and do all this configuration and you can test it so i think i have covered everything if anything is missed please let me know so that i can add one uh, that those scenarios in another video thank you very much we will see in another video very soon